everybody, Grid21, back with another video. And in today's tutorial video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your OBS so that you have a really smooth 60 FPS, 720, or maybe even 1080p stream and not require a dual PC setup as a lot of people seem to think that you need it. So reason the kind of like the reason behind this video and why I'm doing this is that as I just sort of mentioned a few seconds ago a lot of people seem to have this mindset of that oh if my game is lagging and if my stream is lagging and I have the best internet in the world well it must be something with my hardware that I now require a dual PC setup and while that's great and dual PC setups are interesting for sure there's a couple of reasons why I don't think they're really necessary, especially in the age of Intel's 8700K, you know, as a six core 12 thread and AMD's Ryzen eight core 16 thread and soon Ryzen 3, 3000 series CPUs, where I feel like that there's enough cores and GPU power that we don't really need to have that dual PC setup. And to kind of, um, show my point here i'm gonna head and switch over to screen recording and i'm gonna show you guys what my settings are that i have found to literally probably be the best and then i'm going to talk about some things that you can do inside the video games that you play to make the make obs and the game play nice together so let's go ahead and look at my output now Obviously, everything's grayed out because I am recording, so I can't change anything. But what I personally use, and since I have an NVIDIA GPU, I have the NVENC.H264 encoder enabled. And uh, I run my bitrate at, 40, at 4800. Def uh, the preset leave at default. Um, I have my profile at main. The, the level I leave at auto because I've done some experimenting and it really doesn't make a lot of difference for your stream. Um, and these are my, these are just the base settings in my output that I use. Now let's go through and talk about some of this. The reason why I use hardware encoding and not software encoding is because software encoding can actually be, uh, depending on the computer, be actually more intense for the CPU to process. Uh, this goes in tandem with things like uh, Vegas Pro uh, 16, for example, or even Vegas Pro 14, whatever, where you would do um, sort of software rendering, and it taxes your CPU much more and kind of makes that encoding essentially more difficult. Um, by utilizing hardware encoding, or in some cases it's called GPU acceleration, it's sort of, it falls in similar category. It works slightly different um, because in this instance, we're, in, we're basically doing live rendering and live outputting of video to an to a internet site such as YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, uh, Facebook Live, or whatever you happen to be doing. Um, the... H.264 essentially, as far as NVIDIA's video encoder is concerned, you're basically telling your CP, or not CPU, telling OBS, sorry, getting a little bit confused here. You're telling your NVIDIA GPU to send all the video feed to the graphics card for processing and for rendering and for outputting. And in my mind, honestly, I mean, it's not bad to do software encoding, but I feel like that graphics cards excel best at processing video processing video games especially video games we can see this by a lot of benchmarks and stuff that they that it does really well with that so i anybody who has an nvidia gpu i would highly recommend that you do the nvenc encoder you're sending all of the video and actually i could even show you honestly if i could bring up um uh gpu z here let me actually scrub this over to the side and now obviously right now we're recording and some of that recording power is being sent over here. Now, obviously, it's still being like Windows has to run the application. Let's just get that out of the way. Like it's still running. It still has to, you know, put some processing through it because it's Windows has to run the program in something and everything that's a program gets dumped on the CPU. But in this case, we're processing most of our video power into our graphics card. Um, and as I've been doing some reading, the folks over OBS studio are actually are working with, uh, what is called NVIDIA's SDK 
to utilize the G the sorry the RTX 20 series which has the new Turing uh I guess I guess it's a I guess a Turing is like a pro I guess it's their Turing processors I guess if you can call that if, so, if I'm wrong somebody correct me in the comments that's fine I don't know exactly how Nvidia describes and or talks about it but uh essentially they're going to be uh updating OBS to really utilize those newer technologies in the RTX series where they're going to be sending apparently most of the video processing rather than to system RAM to directly to VRAM. Um, how that benefits performance exactly, I don't know. Um, I was just something that I was sort of briefly reading about uh, a couple of days ago by the time you see this or maybe even a couple of years ago depending on when you actually watch this video. Um, and this video will probably be outdated by the time that it's actually up there. But the point is, is that basically we're asking the GPU, hey, take all of this and process all this for us. Okay, so that's all you need to know. The bitrate, and you may notice it is kind of low. And there's a couple reasons for this. Um, first of all, because I'm not a partnered streamer, I cannot run my video. Or I cannot run my stream at six uh, kilobits per second. Excuse me, drink some more. Cannot run it at six kilobits. Uh, 6,000 kilobits, 6 kilobits, that would look terrible, 6,000 kilobits per second. Um, partner streamers usually get, um, they get priority with the different source settings, so people can change it from like 1080, 720, 480, uh, and it goes down to like 240 and 160p, I believe is the order of, of that list. And so being that I'm only an affiliate, um, I only get 7, well, I'm only outputting 720p, but I only output 720 because it also looks seems to look better for my streams anyway um also another reason why you might want to do a lower bit rate when you're not a partnered streamer is because you have mobile viewers and mobile data at least for right now is not at a stage where we can download masses amount of video information to a mobile device um, some people just don't have the network bandwidth they don't have the data plans that allow them to watch um, you know, really high quality streams, unless they're watching a partner stream where they can change the quality to how they want. But we're kind of gearing this particular video to people that are affiliate and below, essentially. Um, if you're a partner and you want to know the best settings, I mean, go ahead, by all means, run at six, you know, 6,000 kilobits per second, go ahead and go up to 1080p, whatever, and stuff like that. But this is just for affiliates and below kind of the thing, uh, or really kind of anybody in general, I don't know, partner or whatever, it may still work for you, it depends. Um, but 4,800 from... A lot of the viewers that I have on my stream, um, they're able to watch it most of the time, not have any issues. So that's why I run my bitrate sort of sort of that low is for that particular reason, for the benefit of mobile viewers. Um, the preset setting is something I have not personally had a chance to really like play with. Um, so, and because I'm not completely sure about exactly what it does, I'm not going to touch on that too much. I don't want to give you the wrong information and have my have it be wrong and have somebody correct me. And it just, that's just not great presentation um, value and not good education value, honestly, to have a misinformation. The profile I have is set to main. And that is actually what is recommended specifically by Twitch. There's actually a uh, website or there's a web page that Twitch produced that talks about the different various settings and actually even bit rates that you can run on their website. So profile main, and that's just what Twitch recommends. Um, things like the level and a couple of these other things. Um, level, I used to know what that is. And unfortunately, I don't remember what it is. So I kind of just leave it on auto for the most part. So I wouldn't even worry about it. Two pass encoding, switch it off. You don't really need it. I think it has to do with how many times it renders the the video. But again, I don't know for sure. So I don't want to give you misinformation. That's my guess. Um, the This GPU, I just leave it at zero. B frames, leave it at two. Um, I used to know what B frames are and I always keep forgetting what that is, but that is what mine are set to. Um, so that is my output settings for OBS. Um, I'm going to take you over to the advanced section and talk about something that I think more streamers should actually be aware of. Now in Windows, um, it will Windows will try to run. It's trying to run everything, right? You know, you have your operating system has to run. 
you have your game you have to run you have discord you have you know maybe like itunes maybe like google chrome vervaldi which is a, a web browser um or whatever else maybe just be running in the background that's a lot for windows to run and actually um as a side note that's why usually people say that things like consoles are actually more powerful in a way because they have less to run and they can focus more on the actual video game because the operating system they have to run is very very small it doesn't have as much resource to tax the hardware and generally games can potentially uh look or run a little bit better because they're not running as much um now, this doesn't go without saying that PC hardware is also just as equally powerful, but in a different way. And it's more powerful in the sense they can run multiple things at once and have high clock speed and have multiple core counts. And a lot of consoles do not, but that's a, you know, you can weigh your discuss you can weigh your your opinions on that as you want. Um, but what will happen is Windows is trying to run everything at normal priority, right? Everything's got to have a priority in Windows. You know, that's why if you see like updates, for example, and you'll notice that your CPU is pegged out at like whatever, you know, 90 to 100%, something like that, it's because it's prioritizing that update. Like that's really important to Windows, apparently. Um, but when it comes to running OBS, you know, Windows is going to look at it and be like, eh, it's. It's kind of it's kind of here. It's not really that important. It's not really below my priority. It's kind of kind of in here, right? So something that I've been doing more recently, and I actually have been pr seeing some very good results, is changing the process priority. Okay, and with this, and you have a you have a uh, series of different priorities here. You have idle, which I assume means it doesn't do anything at all. Um, below normal, so it's not the most important thing that windows should be focusing on you have normal which is what most applications run at you have above normal then you have high um now high isn't something that i have played with i i'm gonna say i wouldn't recommend it um just in case because it could start to cause other issues so i would say run your obs above normal and what you're telling windows is this this process this obs is is above this these list of processes here so anything that's that is above or anything that is here and below just run it any normal i think it's above this and here above normal that's important and that's what you should be focusing on and i will say for a fact that i have found some very good results out of doing process priority above normal in obs um and let's see let me go over to video as far as my video settings i do um 1080p downscale 720 um 60 fps which is the common fps value there's other fps values that you could um, mess with the downscale filter i i've done some research on it it doesn't look like it really changes how things look too much although as linus says on his videos your results may vary or your mileage may vary something like something clever like that um so these are my specific obs settings for obs side now let's talk about something here we live in an age where um basically like everybody is, is always concerned about like the fastest fps you can get like 100 fps and higher and it looks really, really great it looks great until obs looks at it and goes uh yeah no um and what i've actually so let me kind of tell a bit of a story i, to, I know i don't mean to make this like a whole discussion video but this is actually kind of important um a lot of the games i use uh, that i run and play i used to turn vsync off on everything like i was just like you know what the heck with it if my gpu can run something at 120 frames or whatever rocket league is running 120 frames and it can do it might as well do it just go ahead and i used to run my obs at like 48 frames which looked kind of cool for the most part but very very recently i got to thinking about it for a moment if obs only supports frame rates up to 60 fps Although you might be able to run it higher. I've never actually tried, but honestly, Twitch doesn't support anything above 60F as far as I know. Um, I kind of got to think about it. I was like, you know, it really doesn't make sense to have VSync off um, when OBS only can support up to 60F and Twitch only looks at things up to 60F. Why would I, you know, why not turn on VSync? And I'll tell you for a fact, when I turned on vertical sync for a majority of my games, my streaming quality and how things looked, looked dramatically better. And 
what is also happens is that when you cap your frame rate, because you're doing that dot H.264 hardware encoding, it takes a significant amount of load off of your GPU because you have to think about the fact that your GPU is not just streaming and encoding, but it is also running the game. And there's a lot. And depending on the game, like if you're talking about Shadow of the Tomb Raider and you have everything on Ultra, whatever, and you're like just you're just hammering the GPU like super, super hard. Um, that's a lot of work. And on top of trying to stream. And I'll and there was an instance where I was actually streaming Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and as soon as I turned uh vertical sync on, my OBS and Shadow of the Tomb Raider worked perfectly together there was absolutely like zero like the lag just went away and it was just smooth gameplay all the way through so for some people i may you know are, are like i don't want to turn vertical syncing and that's fine you know if you don't want to that's fine if you've got a more powerful graphics card than a 980 ti which is what i'm currently running fine okay you know do do your own experimenting do what works for you but for those uh, you know for but if you want things to look a little smoother my suggestion would be turn on vertical sync on your video games and you'll notice a significant difference um so i know this is kind of like a rambly slash tutorial video i hope this was actually helpful but these are my settings and my suggestions for making your twitch stream or whatever you're outputting to look really smooth and really you know nice and everything so i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions of course drop in the comments section down below i do read and answer those i hope this video was again helpful until then i will see you guys on twitch.tv for slash grid 21 and until it's or until another tutorial video so take care and see you then